Hey, yo, what's good? Check it out. This your boy, Elder Sensei, one half of the legendary artifacts. You are right now in tune to my man, Tim Einenkel, at the library on rapstation.com. Let's get it popping, y'all. Artifacts. Peace, Elder Sensei. I'm out. He's carrying your scars that you can't see Trying to cover them up in bars Drink away the pain Smoking, reaching a different plane There's different hoods around the world My next guest has been referred to as a rising star He's truly taking his career seriously And not looking to be a one-hit wonder He's Bronx MC God's Child And has released his latest EP called Reborn Featuring Killer Priest and Loda Lux Produced entirely by Jordan River Banks God's Child, welcome to the library with Tim Ine and Colin, RapStation.com Yo, what's good, what's good God's Child in the building, how y'all doing, what's good Heat blast, feet dash, heat flash from the climbing Crash course with the violence, blast forth to the highest Then it's silent, you must be crazy Yeah, that must be crazy Cause I'm still sane, nowadays it's all the same First first, like what drew you to rap and hip hop culture? So from the beginning it was my brothers that really put me onto it Cause at the time when I was listening, like when I was coming up a lot of the hip hop that was out at the time, I wasn't really into. So my brothers put me on to the stuff they was listening to, which was like Tupac, Nas, Wu Tang, stuff like that. And I really got into it and Mob Deep too, because it sounded like where I was at, where I was growing up and, and the neighborhood that I was in, it sounded just like that. Like it fit perfectly. So that's really what got me into it was that 90s hip hop with like um, Tupac, Nas, Wu Tang, a lot of New York dudes. Did you try to like, I mean, was there anything that. I guess it would be your generation that you like, you felt, and then you like play for your brothers, and they're like that's whack. <laughs> um, nah, not even nah, nah. Cause um, the only dudes I was into um, from around my time was like Dipset, and they was rocking with that too. So, <laughs> so it was all good. You know, what I mean, I wasn't listening to no bullshit back then. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I describe you as, um, and you read interviews on you, and you listen to your music, and you're definitely not trying to be that. MC that like sees a formula out there, yeah. And, like kind of like try to copy, yeah, it. copy like cannabis yeah. says, like same shit, different lacks there, right? Yeah. Um. So, w what is your goal uh, in this art? Uh -huh. uh, what is your goal with your music? Um, and what purpose does rap music serve for you? Um, my goal is like to be one of the illest, man. That's what I want to be. I want to be somebody that people listen to and they relate to and at the same time it's fun to listen to not just relate to me on, on some like you feel my lyrics but you feel my flow you feel my voice i sound good all of that i want to be one of them people that just makes real good music and the purpose for hip-hop for me is like that's that's what gets me through the day like i love listening not even just hip-hop like music in general but hip-hop the majority of the time i just love listening to it it gets me through the day it inspires me you know what i'm saying because when i hear a good song i want to make a good song like it just keeps me going and it's a culture for me it's not just is something that I just listen to or something that I'm just trying to get in and make money off of is really like a way of life for me. Even the way I talk, the way I dress, the way I walk is all based in hip hop. So it, it really became a lifestyle for me. So it's just, it's, it's like anything else in your lifestyle. Like it, it's what keeps you going. It's something that you do every day. You wake up every morning, you brush your teeth, you get dressed. That's a part of your culture. That's what you do in your everyday life. So hip hop is a part of my everyday life. So that's that's what it does for me. You know what I mean? I mean, it's just so your goal is to like make this a full time career. Hell yeah, that's what I want. You know what I mean? Like that's what I make the music for, and that's why I, I, I go so hard with it. If it wasn't that for me, then I wouldn't even try hard. Like I try to make good music. I I, I make sure all my lyrics is right, my flows is right, my mixing and mastering, my artwork, everything, and I do it all myself. I don't do it. You know what I mean? I don't got nobody really backing me like that. I do everything myself, and I try to make sure it's as professional and ill as possible. You know what I mean? You got a lot of people that come in and they just um. You know what I mean? They don't care about their lyrics. They don't care about how they sound. Right, right. You know what I mean? I'm not one of them people. I'm putting my everything into it. Do you have a sounding board? I mean, I'm saying like, you you complete a track. Yeah. Do you have someone that, that one person that you play it for just so you know it's right? Or do you just, are you at that point where you, you're your best critic, right? So you're, because you're the hardest on yourself. I am the hardest on myself, yeah. I play it for people, but I don't take too much, I don't listen too much to what they say. Because a lot of people might just be like, oh yeah, that's hot. Right, right, you know yeah, what I mean? Right, just because yeah. they know me. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like I play it for my girl a lot. And my girl's always going to think everything that I do is hot. Right. You know what I mean? So I don't, so I don't take that too much into account. So I listen to it over and over again. Like I listen to a song, I might do it. And then I'll listen to it, I'll be like, nah, I don't like that line. Let me change that line. Or I could have said that better. You know what I mean? So I, I listen to it the most myself. And I'm my best critic. So that's how I feel like I make myself better. You know what I mean? What's your ideal right? I mean, just in general, not just this, not just the uh, the EP reborn, but what's your your ideal writing situation? I mean, so sometimes I don't write. You know what I mean? Um, but the whole reborn EP, I wrote everything on there. Uh -huh. But um, like my projects, like Don't Sleep on Me, I got another one time. Then I got Remember, I didn't write none of that. I just went in, I lit something up, 
And then I just started going in on the mic for like a few bars and I'll stop, I'll think about the next one and I'll go in for a few more and I just do it like that. So sometimes I don't even do it. And when I do it like that, um, it's, more, it's a little bit more simple. Mm -hmm. So it's easier for people to get. When I do like a reborn or like a forever, something that I write out, like the lyrics are usually a lot deeper. Mm -hmm. So I do that for certain people. Like if I'm doing a Jordan River Banks project, I'm gonna make sure I write everything out. Cause I feel like that's the audience where they really gonna listen to the lyrics. You know what I mean? If I'm doing like just like a mixtape, or something like that, like a re like a remember, or like a time, or, right. or don't sleep on me, or something like that. Then I just go in and I just get experimental with it and have fun. So when it comes to writing, I feel like when I write is because I want the li I want everything to to really be as deep and as personal as possible. Then when I do the other shit, like the mixtape shit, I just want to have people having fun with it. You know what I mean? All right. Yeah. I want to talk about the the reborn with uh, produced by Jordan River Banks, but I first. S something that really stood out, I was reading an interview about you and you were talking about today's hip hop being too much about, pretty much too much about how it's like a bunch of wealthy people rapping about being wealthy yeah. and poor people are like, oh, what the hell? Yeah, exactly, you know, like, yeah. Um, when did you know that you were going to use this platform to kind of be like a voice for the voiceless? Like what part of your career or even just part of your you know, messing around rapping, did you yeah. know like, hey, this, this this is my chance to be a voice? From the jump, because when I first started listening to hip hop, my favorite rapper was Tupac. Oh, so then from nice. the jump, when I was listening to him, and then I would see his interviews and I would see things like that, that shit inspired me. Not even just to, to, to rap and nothing like that, just to be a better human being, to, to fill my mind with information that would just make me a better person. I want to do the same thing he did. I wanted to talk to people and make them feel me. I want to talk to people and make them better. So just by, just by doing that, automatically off the rip, everything I used to write, even as a little 14-year-old kid that ain't know nothing about life, I wanted to make sure that anything I was saying was something deep, you know what I mean? Uh, so from the jump, I was like that, yeah. Were you able, I mean, was this like, just, it's always interesting because you have like, you, have, you, have, you meet people like yourself that are crazy super talent. Yeah. And then you think about like, all right, you're the kid at, you're the kid at school that like, probably just not paid attention to the teacher because he was too Yo, busy. Yo, I wasn't. Like, yeah. I really wasn't, yeah. Did you have someone in, I guess in school, I know, because I, because I was crazy ADD kid, you know, yeah, like yeah. whatever. But did you have that? Did you have people around you fostering your talent or was it, you know, was it that kind of that fight of like, well, you know, God's child is, you know, messing, you know, messing around in school today. But as hey, far wait, as, let's look at his writing. As far as teachers and all of that, nah, not really. You know what I mean? Except for like, I had like an English, I had like two English, it was always English teachers yeah. that would be like, um, like they would see what I'm doing. Like sometimes they even let me like do an assignment and write a rap for it. Oh, nice. Like nice. just to let me get by. Cause they knew that I, I wasn't, you know what I mean? I wasn't trying to start trouble or nothing like that, but. I just wasn't into the school shit like that, but they'll still let me do it my way. Right. And it was only English teachers that used to do that. It wasn't really anybody else. And then like other people that was fostering my talent, like not really, you know what I mean? But there was other dudes in school at that time that was rhyming and then we would, we would just like how they say, like steel sharp and steel. Yeah. So we would make each other better like that, like rhyming in, in, in school or in the classroom or we even set up a little studio and start recording. We get better like that. People would be like, nah, don't say it like that. Say it like this, you know what I mean? That just makes you better. So. That was kind of like what fostered my talent was like my peers, you know what I mean? Uh, I want to turn. I want to turn to the music. Um, and you've, you've, you're working this uh, this EP is with Jordan Rivers yeah. Banks. Uh, you've done other work with Jordan Rivers yeah. Banks as well. Um, do you remember the first beat you heard by him that kind of said, "Hey, I gotta, I gotta yeah. work with this guy"? Damn, y'all want to remember the name of it too, because it was something that had Hellraiser and Killer Priest on it. Ghetto Jesus, I think he made that. Yo, that shit is fire. That shit is ridiculous. So um, when I met up with him, I was listening to his shit on SoundCloud because um, Killer Priest was like working on that um, Psychic World of Walter Reed album. So they right. dropped like a little single. So then I hit him up on SoundCloud. I was like, yo, that beat is fire, right? But I ain't thinking he gonna hit me back. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I'm just letting him know like, yo, that shit is fire. So then he hit me back. He's like, yo, good looking out. He was like, he checked out some of my stuff. Cause at that time I had already put out a project um, called Book of a Scribe. I was on this little independent label called God Sending Music or whatever. Mm. And then I had like some, I had a joint with Sadat X and shit like that. So it was out. So he heard it. He was like, yo, that shit is, that shit is official. I'm like, yo, it's, it's ill hearing that from you because you work with dudes that I look up to. Yeah, yeah. So then, um, you know, he was like, yo, you want to work on something? We worked on like one or two songs. Like the first song we did was Heavens, which yeah. is like the craziest song on that Forever Project. And then from there, we, we built it into the whole Forever Project and we made that. You know what I mean? 
what about, I mean, for example, like, what about the Heavens beat that kind of blew you away in terms of like... Yo, that shit is just crazy. That shit sound like the Heavens. That's what yeah. made me write like that. You know what I mean? It sound like some space, some, some like, next level shit. So that shit took me to the next level when I wrote those lyrics. And a lot of people like that song. Like, that shit got mad plays. Like, people fuck with that song the most off of that project. You know what I mean? Uh, you're obviously from the Bronx, Washington yeah. Heights, you know, all over. Yeah. Uh, Jordan Banks is Amsterdam. Amsterdam. Yeah. Yeah. How does that collaboration work? I mean, it's, you know, I, I know it's probably impossible to get you two in the studio together, but yeah. like, um, are you writing to his beats? Is he producing around you what you're writing? I mean, there's a lot of back and forth. Yeah, it'll be like he'll send a beat. It'll be like, it'll be like uh, a first version. It'll be like a first draft of the beat. And then I'll write to that. I'll spit to it. Then he'll build the beat after I send him the vocals and everything like that. He'll build it around what I did to the beat. Oh, nice. And then that's what makes the song even better. Like, if you hear the first version of the song, as compared to the last one, it's going to sound mad different. So that's that's how we work. Like, um, he'll send me some beats. I'll go ahead. I'll write to it. I'll spit to it. Send it back. He'll work on it. By the time I hear the last version of it, I'm like, yo, this shit is crazy. You know what I mean? Like, it don't even sound the same to me. So that's how we work together. And that dude is a genius. That dude is a genius. He's a, one of the illest producers out there. I got to say that. You know, as I, as I mentioned, this is not the first time you've worked with uh, Jordan Burbanks. Yeah. Uh, you did the uh, Forever EP as, you know, well, I mean, full length, uh, full production by him. Yeah. Uh, are there, for Reborn and Forever, are there, like, what are the similarities and, and the differences in terms of the creative process, in terms of, you know, your writing? Um, so Forever was, like, me introducing myself. The whole point of Forever was me saying, I'm going to leave something here to be Forever. You know what I mean? It's like, um... Like what any artist want to do, they want to have something out to be remembered by. So that's what Forever was. It was like I'm leaving some. This is like my introduction to people, type of thing. With Reborn, it was like all right, I already, I already introduced myself. I'm not even on that like that no more. It's like now I'ma just go hard. Now I'ma just let people know how I really feel about things, what I really think about things, with no holding back. So Reborn was like completely me, as opposed to Forever, just me introducing myself. You know what I mean? Forever's like the younger me. Uh, Reborn is like the more mature me that's just, I know exactly who I am. I'm not holding nothing back. I don't care how people feel. I'm just letting you know. You know what I mean? On Reborn, you have Lotus, Lo 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 yeah, Lux Lotus Lux and yeah. uh, Killer Priest. Yeah. Uh, I mean, two incredible lyricists, yep, obviously. Yep. When you have a, a mission for your, like you mentioned, a mission or a, a purpose of an EP, yeah. how do you, as the, as the lead artist, ensure that like Lotus Lux and Killer Priest fit, are into, going it, right? to fit into it? Yeah. Especially like, for me, if I'm looking up to these dudes, yeah. I'll be like, write whatever you want. You know, like, yeah, yeah. Like, how do you make sure that that's going to work out? You just got to know where you fit in with it and where they fit in with it. So with like somebody like Loaded Lux, I'm not going to try to have him on there spitting on nothing too deep like that or nothing like that. So if I'm going to send him a beat, it's going to be a beat that I know that he's going to destroy. I know he's a battle rapper. I know he's about bars, so I'm going to send him a beat that's based in bars. No. And then I'm going to do it that way too, but I'm going to put something deep in there. A little bit. I'm going to sprinkle it in there with somebody like that. Now, if somebody with, like Killer Priest, he's already on a similar mission that I'm on. So I could just completely do me, and then he's going to do him, and we're going to meet each other somewhere. All right. Just like on that Godspeed song. Like on the Godspeed song, I'm really just saying slick shit, um, like throwing some deep lyrics in here. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm expressing God's speech in my way, saying that everything that I'm saying is God's speech. He took it to a whole nother level where he just starts talking about the universe and everything like that and right. saying that that's God's speech. God creating the universe, the universe existing in itself, just you being able to look at the sun, moon, and stars and everything like that, that's God's speech. So just by doing that, we met each other even though we, we came at it from two different perspectives, we met each other and it still came together because we're similar in that way. So, you know what I mean? It worked together. Like someone like with having Killer Priest on the track, do you, is there added pressure that you put on yourself to write, I mean, or do you just approach it the same way? Where nah, like, I don't put no pressure on myself, because if I put pressure on myself, I'm going to just, then I'm going to crack, yeah. you know what I mean? I don't do that, I, I do me, and, I, and that's where the confidence comes in, the confidence of knowing that you're a good MC, you know that you nice, you know what I mean? You don't have to be intimidated by anybody. If you're intimidated by somebody, even if they better than, even if they better than you, or they somebody that you look up to, or a legend, then... You know what I mean? You coming at it the wrong way because you're just supposed to come in and do you. That I mean, even if somebody is a legend or somebody better, they, they want a new generation of MC to just come in and be them. They don't want somebody to come in and try to impress them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? They want somebody to come in and do them and give them something to appreciate. So that's how I look at it. I look at it like, nah, I don't come in here to impress nobody or nothing like that. I just come in here to express myself and be me. So that's what I do. On a, with a, the track with a Loaded Lux, a Blue Flame, um, it's a straight, obviously a straight battling. Yeah. Um, yeah. 
but then you also have Blue Flame Part Two, yeah, yeah, which yeah. is the forty-five seconds yeah. of just you. Yeah. Why not just tack that on to the end of Blue Flame? Yo, was that just like a? Because it'll be ill if people could just skip to it and they hear it. You know what <laughs> I mean? They don't gotta go through the whole song. And that's why we did it like that. And then what's crazy is that I recorded that that um, Blue Flame Two for fun. Like I ain't even do it like to put it out. Oh, I so just, that wasn't even like nah, extra that's... that you wrote for Blue Flame. Nah, I didn't like um. Because originally it might have been like two verses of me, right. and then Loaded Lux would have came on at the end. But like the song was already set up. Like it was going to be one verse, then it was going to be Loaded Lux, then it was going to be the bridge. Yeah. But then I was just having fun with it. I was like, yo, I just did an extra verse, and I just threw it at Jordan River Banks. I was like, yo, I did that for fun. Hear that. Then he was like, yo, we're going to find something for that. We're going <laughs> to do something with that. I was like, all right. So when he sent me that back, I was like, yo, this shit about to be crazy. When people hear this, they're going to wild out. You know what I mean? <laughs> Uh, you talked a little bit about uh, God's speech with Killer Priest, and, yeah. um, but can you elaborate a little more? Like, what's for you? What's the purpose of this track, to you? So it's like um, since I'm going into the whole reborn thing, it's like that's um. So that's taking it back to the days of like when you used to have grave diggers, the Sons of Man, and people like that, and they come in rhyming and they saying they putting um, stuff together in a clever way, but they also dropping jewels in there. That's what that song is. So that, so that it's that's the whole point of it. When I say God's speech, it's like this is coming back. Yeah. This is the reborn of that. I'm bringing it back. So, but the significance of it is that I grew up listening to Killer Priest. Like one of the first songs that made me realize that like rappers could be intelligent was Bible. You know what I mean? Because yeah. it's, it's like even the name Bible, basic instructions before leaving Earth. Like you gotta. Even the name is crazy. And then you listen to the lyrics and he's just dropping like information. And then you like, yo, this is like a smart rapper. Yeah. Like, and it's not it's not no ignorant shit or nothing like that. So the significance of it is that I've been listening to this dude since I was like 13, 14 years old. And now, you know what I mean, I done built my skill level up to the point where I'm actually on a song with this dude. Like nobody could take that from me now. You know what I mean? I'm on a song with literally one of my favorite rappers ever. I'm on a song with him and we both going in. And it's a crazy song. So that's the significance of it to me is that I know that I did that. You know what I mean? That shit is crazy to me. Do you ever like wish that you were like, were that maybe you were born in a different era? I mean, you know, like, or, nah. or, or, or is there, I guess the mis misperception is that today's, you, today's generation of hip hop yeah. heads are just not there yet. But yeah. I mean, or do you think it's a perfect time? A nah, perfect yeah, it's place perfect timing for me. I think everything's perfect timing. I don't look at anything like, um, anything happens the way it's not supposed to. I see it as everything happens the way it's supposed to. So the only thing I do is I keep faith in what I'm doing and I keep pushing with it and I feel like, you know what I mean, it's, going, it's, it's a place for me, you know what I mean? It, is, it didn't have to be in the 90s or it didn't have to be back then. I don't feel like it had to be. I feel like I could have it right now and I have my own shit, especially with the internet and all these things that's going on right now, I could, I could have my own shit. I don't need to be back in the 90s to have it or nothing like that. I feel like I'm right in the right time because I'm the new generation of all of that. So it got to keep moving on one way or another. Even if I was in the 90s, it would have to be somebody in this time doing right. what I'm doing right now. So I'm just, I just happen to be that person right now. If you were to take a lyric from EP, the Reborn yeah. EP to best represent where you are as an artist, would there be a lyric or even, or even a song, a track? To best represent Watch Me Rise, the last one, because that, that whole song was, you, you could pretty much call that song Reborn or Rebirth, you know what I mean? That's just me. That whole song is like that line when they say, um, when I was a child, I used to think as a child, but now that I'm a man, I put childish things away. Nice. That's, what, that's pretty much what that whole song represents. It's like as I, how I used to be as a kid, hanging out in the street, doing all this stupid shit, thinking that, you know what I mean, um, every day tomorrow is promised and everything like that. I don't see life that way no more. I see it how, um, you know what I mean, I'm a little older now. I'm trying to do the right things. I'm trying to make sure, I'm trying to get my business right. I'm trying to get everything set up right. So that best represents me now because that's why I called the project Reborn instead of Rebirth. The, the title is a statement. I'm already reborn. Now yeah. the, the project is the, is the process, but I'm already reborn. So that last song is just letting you know, boom, this is who I am now. And everything that I build from here is building from that, that foundation of that song. So what's next? Uh, I'm working on something right now. Another I'm planning right. on um, bouncing from here and going to record right now because wow. I already recorded like six songs for what I for what I'm about to put out now. It's a little mixtape. Like I said, like sometimes I don't write. I ain't writing this. I'm just going in, spazzing out. You know what I mean? I'm shooting more videos. I just dropped my website. I got a new website, godschild.com. So y'all could go on there. I got like the little um, all my music is posted on there. Got my little bio up there. Um, my little gallery, all that shit. So I got that set up. And I'm going to just keep it moving, son. Keep it going. 
New EP, Reborn, produced entirely by Jordan Riverbanks, yeah. featuring uh, Killer Priest and Low Lux. Yeah. Uh, gotcha. Thank you so much for joining me on Thank the you, Library of Thank Co you for having me on. I appreciate that for real. We got the blue flame. It don't get no hotter, yo. I be killing vivid within my penmanship. I'm Memphis and my mental they ain't no censorship. The mentalist took apprenticeship with the best of them. And represent y'all offensive. Y'all should repent for this answer. This with the mind state only great if you rhyme great. Mind bend to your mind shape. Add nod to your spine break. They don't want no real up in the game. Cause one real make everybody look lame. I'm not a fan. What the fuck is a fan? I'm a fan. Matter of fact, I'm a Alien hovering overland Coming up with a plan to get everyone in my hand Roll up another branch while I'm kindling up a chance To get everybody involved when I aim my shoot up the land And a satellite in the sky Coming down to expand everybody bone That never leave from their hand They playing underhand I got the truth in the upper hand And y'all don't know I think I got him only took my third eye for me to go spot them. They been playing games. It's lames. I'm about to drop them with the blue case. Blue flag. Yo, I got em. Uh. You're in the fashion over being factual. My travels real as Eli with the book inside the statue. Catch these punches like grapples. I'm puzzled how to baffle. Sun blocking, throwing shade. Well, I'm coming out the shadows, blacking out. Really back in the red. That's traffic breaking. Faith eradicating. Past the Mason versus a master Mason. Average rating make a pro. Well, only when you fascinating. I'm quick silver versus flash racing. That's fascinating. Sad to say it can it. You're more mechanic than organic. You making choices and taking chances. You're poor managed. I dance in the ghetto with crooks. Pushes, players, and all lookers. Hookers, this hood boogers, but good cookers. Would you know it? The flame blowing, your dame flowing. Just to give me brain, that's a foreign exchange student. Now your day ruined. Hop on that smartphone and play stupid. The shooters love me, don't think you but They ain't got the heat, but don't sweat out them. Felt the cold, the surviving like Daniel. Out the lions, then I'm the boldest. They say they the best. Where I'm from, it's got to show it, and we shoot the kill. Aim steady, we locked and loaded. Yo, God. I got caught up. Only took my third eye. Need to go spot them. They been playing games. Slaves, I'm about to drop them with the blue case. Blue flag. Yo, I got 